it's my turn. I, I, I always present as well. And I haven't presented at Ed before. I'm always the host, but this time I like requested, can I present something? So you've got me for about 20 odd minutes. So let's see if I can get this right. I'm going to be talking about hemp and its history. Now, um, for the last year and a half, I've been doing a lot of hemp, hemp -like development with various different mills. And it's been a lot of fun. And as a process, I've learned about it. So I thought it was quite nice to share. And I've done a couple of different panel talks as well about hemp. You can find them online. Much longer ones that are two hours long. But I'm going to try and do this in 20 minutes. So hemp has been around for like sort of like millennia. Obviously, obviously everyone, everyone knows it for, for its like sort of a scientific name. It's kind of, it's sort of, it's sort of kind of a satire. But it's, it's, and it's known mo mo mostly for this it's actually like relationship with like, sort of like cannabis. It's tarnished with the same brush. But we've been using hemp for for like millennia. We've been we've been using it. It's actually there's more earlier evidence that we've been using hemp earlier than actually cotton. So we've been cold, been cultivating it and like sort of sort of using it for ten ten thousand years rather than Andrew's presentation that says cotton's been around for seven for ten thousand years. Obviously these things have been around for much longer. But there's evidence that we have been using it and they found early examples in like Mesopotamia in like Iraq. So we have been we have we have, we have been using it and we've become and. and it's actually our Chinese friends that have become the most specialist at actually using hemp. And even their emperor, you know, sort of like 2007, 700 BC, BC, he made all of his, all of his public, he made it completely law that everyone had to grow hemp and like sort of like use it. And the Chinese were the first to use hemp to make paper. So the first paper was made, made out of hemp, which is quite, quite cool. We all, in Europe and, and in the Americas, we know hemp obviously for the sailors and we, we know it for cargo. We know it's super duper strong. Um, you know, that's what we know it for. We don't necessarily know it for other things, but whenever we think of, talk about hemp, it's like known for string and rope and that, 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 and, and that, 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 that kind of stuff. Even, even like clothes and like, and like sort of like, sort of like uniform too. Mostly, mostly navel. I've got a video here, which is three minutes long. It's really, really funny. And I just want to share it with you. Let's see if I can actually get this up. Long ago, when these ancient Grecian temples were new, hemp was already old in the service of mankind. For thousands of years, even then, this plant had been grown for cordage and coarse cloth in China and elsewhere in the East. For centuries prior to about 1850, all the ships that sailed the Western Seas were rigged with hemp and rope and sails. For the sailor, no less than the hangman, hemp was indispensable. A 44-gun frigate, like our cherished old Ironsides, took over 60 tons of hemp for rigging, including an anchor cable 25 inches in circumference. The Conestoga wagons and prairie schooners of pioneer days were covered with hemp and canvas. Indeed, the very word canvas comes from the Arabic word for hemp. In those days, hemp was an important crop in Kentucky and Missouri. Then came cheaper imported fibers for cordage, like jute, sisal, and manila hemp, and the culture of hemp in America declined. But now, with Philippine and East Indian sources of hemp in the hands of the Japanese, and shipment of jute from India curtailed, American hemp must meet the needs of our army and navy as well as of our industries. In 1942, patriotic farmers at the government's request planted 36,000 acres of seed hemp, an increase of several thousand percent. The goal for 1943 is 50,000 acres of seed hemp. In Kentucky, much of the seed hemp acreage is on river bottom land such as this, along the Kentucky River Gorge. Some of these fields are inaccessible except by boat. Thus, plans are afoot for a great expansion of the hemp industry as a part of the war program. This film is designed to tell farmers how to handle this ancient crop, now little known outside Kentucky and Wisconsin. This is hemp seed. Be careful how you use it. For to grow hemp legally, you must have a federal registration and tax stamp. This is provided for in your contract. Ask your AAA committee man or your county agent about it. Don't forget, hemp demands a rich, well-drained soil such as is found here in the bluegrass region of Kentucky or in central Wisconsin. It must be loose and rich in organic matter. Poor soils won't do. Soil that will grow good corn will usually grow hemp. Hemp is not hard on the soil. In Kentucky, it has been grown for several years on the same ground, though this practice is not recommended. A dense and shady crop, hemp tends to choke out weeds. Here's a Canada thistle that couldn't stand the competition. Dead as a dodo. Thus, hemp leaves the ground in good condition for the following crop. For fiber, hemp should be sown five pecks to the acre. 
The drill, the closer the rows, the better. These rows are spaced about four inches. This hemp has been broadcast. Either way, it should be sewn thick enough to grow a slender stalk. Here's an ideal stand. The right height to be harvested easily, thick enough to grow slender stalks that are easy to cut and process. Stalks like these here on the left, they yield the most fiber and the best. Those on the right are too coarse and woody. For seed, hemp is planted in hills like corn, sometimes by hand. Hemp is a dioecious plant. The female flower is inconspicuous, but the male flower is easily spotted. In seed production, after the pollen has been shed, these male plants are cut out. These are the seeds on a female plant. Hemp for fiber is ready to harvest when the pollen is shedding and the leaves are falling. In Kentucky, hemp harvest comes in August. Okay, isn't that cool? So let me start my presentation again. Um, I like playing that, it's quite fun, because it's actually, um, so hemp's really interesting, because obviously um, it's been around, obviously, for many, many years, and it's actually Henry VIII that actually made it, so it's actually law that everyone grew hemp. And obviously there's parts of, the, U the parts of the UK as well, especially Hampshire, which is actually named after hemp, which is really quite inter sort of interesting. So it's been, it's been around, obviously there's loads of Anglo-Saxon Anglo words that have come, 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 come from hemp. We learned from that video also, the word hemp comes from the, Ar comes from the Arabic for like canvas as well. But it's actually in the 20th century, around about the 20s or tw tw about the 20s that hemp and, and like cannabis got a really bad rap. And it's, some people have said it's actually to do with the cotton people giving it a bad rap, could be, but, there was definitely a campaign to smear hemp and it came and obviously cannabis and hemp are pretty much tarnished with the same brush so you know it's a shame really how it happened but basically from the 20s it actually got banned and as as a, as a result we couldn't use hemp either but it's actually from the 80s that we've been starting to use more modern hemp more cottonized hemp and that's that's actually come, come about as well and from the 80s onwards it's become a lot a lot more popular to actually use now the actual hemp itself it doesn't come from the leaves it comes from the stalk so what's interesting is um you know you can and what's amazing about it is also the entire plant can be used so unlike other plants where you can only use you know the, the flower part every single part of the hemp plant can be used down 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 to the roots of everything else to make lots of other products so there's a joke where you can you've got fifty thousand like uses and that's a bit of a, a marketing ploy but basically yes pretty much everything can be used and we learned also that you know the soil types as well. It it, it helps the soil. It, like we it, like sort of like rejuvenates the soil too. It was around the 1700s or also where the whole like decline of hemp actually happened, and that's where we've actually get well, cotton coming 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 through. But there's two main reasons like, for it. Obviously, the staple length with cotton you can get much more finer staple length, so you can get a lot more finer cloth being made. And hemp's great because you've got longer staple, short staples, a bit more a bit more regular. So. For us denim, denim people, it's amazing, amazing. But ge generally speaking, hemp itself is quite coarse, and obviously you get to, you, you've got two different types as well. But that it was mostly actually to do with slavery because of the artificial pricing of cotton. That's the reason why cotton became a lot more uh, popular, and hemp actually started to like decline. So it was actually to do with to, to, to do with that. But we but we know now that. Hot cotton, you know, it grows pretty much in any like environment. Every every single state in 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 like America can actually grow it, and also all types of soil kind of you can grow hemp, which is quite amazing. Even only last month, the Pakistan government basically approved for a controlled hemp plan. So the fact you know that Pakistan is going for it, it basically it gives an indication that hemp is because is is about to become extremely big. You know, especially in like Europe and a lot more legalization has been come. So a lot more people, even in like the UK as well. I mean, most, most parts of Europe, you can, most of the hemp that we get now is either from the Belgium region in France or it's from China. They're, they're the two main biggest like sort of producers. But the fact that our Pakistani friends are going, are like going for it soon says that there's going to be, it's going to be a massive influx of hemp quite soon. Obviously, there's hemp versus cotton. It's not, not the best way to explain it, but, you know, it does, it, it's pretty much there. You know, hemp grows, hemp takes three to four months to grow. Cotton takes eight to nine. Hemp doesn't really, really need many like pesticides or pesticides. Cotton, you know, it, you, it, it does use some pesticides to grow. The average yield uh, for hemp on the same amount of land is, is a lot more bigger than it would, would, would be for, for cotton. But the water usage, that's the main thing. And this is a bit of a gray area because there's lots of work that BCI and other initiatives are doing. So not sure if this actual fact is, is correct, but you know, it basically, a quarter of the amount of water that would be used for cotton could be grown for the same amount of, of, of actually hemp. So it's quite it's all, it's all interesting. And also a little, little fact from like Levi's as well, you know, 3,781 litres of fresh, fresh, 
fresh water, 2,600 hundred of that is just in the cultivation of that cotton. So if you use hemp, you definitely would cut two thirds of the actual water in every garment that, that you would make, which is quite interesting. There's also a, a sort of a, a myth or a legend that basically when, when like Levi Strauss and Jacob Davis first made their patent, and they patented it in 18 May, May 20th, 1873, it could have been that they might have used a duck canvas which was made and made, made out of hemp. Now, Levi's have said on the record that's not true and everything that I found out as well from my friend Miles Johnson and other people, that it was most likely from the Amistad Cotton Wool Manufacturing Com Company. But saying that, you never know. You might, we might find it, we might find it in someone's archive, we might find it in, buried in a mine or buried in the ground. It might, it might be there, but we don't know. Levi's on, on the record have said that it's not really true, but the fact that it was a it was a it was a it was a duck canvas it could be um obviously um hemp itself we know um the older style wet spun hemp is very very rough it's it basically like reminds us of like linen it's quite scratchy if you ever cross, if you come across any hemp garments you'll find that it's very very scratchy so it's un for the untrained person they're like thinking oh my god hemp is so scratchy how on earth would you put it in a pair of pair, pair of jeans and but i'll get get to that quite soon but the production process it, itself is after after the uh, after the after the hemp is actually, actually cut, it's laid for a couple of months to actually dry dry out. There is a process to speed this up, and it's a bit of a bit of a bit of a bit of a secret. And then we get to the bale form. So it's this process which is quite interesting that a lot of us designers and engineers are more more interested in. And hopefully, I'll get some videos of, of that process from one of our well, Chinese or our Pakistani friends. But basically, the retting process is is actually the the, the process which is quite it's quite sort of interesting. Then after that process, it pretty much goes. goes through the same machines that you would do for cotton so everything from the carding to the drawing to, to the roving is the same sort of like sort of process but then as i said there's two different types of, of hemp that 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 are available now there's a wet there's a wet there's wet spun hemp which is really really cool which is actually the old style hemp which is a bit 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 more rougher then we've got the newer cottonized hemp which is this is actually the one that a lot more of our mill mill our mill friends are like using everything from in Pakistan to China you name it they're using cottonized hemp and i've been using a lot of cottonized hemp in the last 6 7 months Believe me, you would never know it's hemp. It's quite remarkable, and it's definitely an amazing, like, re amazing, like, replacement. Obviously, we know now um, hemp has got anti, anti, antibacterial, like, sort of, of, of like UV stuff as well, which is quite amazing. Got one little short video which I'm going to play from our friend's author. This is Gen H. It's the brand new outcome of technology, biology, and mostly nature. In other words, a combination of our latest technique and the oldest fiber used by mankind. Hemp is a sustainable raw material, environmentally responsible and biodegradable. Hemp requires much less water, grows very quickly and uses minimal nutrients from the soil. It requires no synthetic fertilizers or GMO seeds. For over 6,000 years, Hemp has been a miracle crop, and at Ulta, we believe it will be again. Well, okay, what makes Gen H so special? It's naturally antibacterial, antimicrobial, biodegradable, and now with our alchemy finish, it's super soft and gentle. Sustainability is business as usual at Ulta. We are the eco-modern generation who embrace past and present conventional and unconventional, technology and nature. We are long-term advocates, and we see hemp as a vital link in the chain, moving towards a cleaner and greener future for denim. Join us with Gen H, our newest collection made with hemp. So, very interesting actually, that, that video. So obviously, you know, I've done lots of hemp stuff as well. It's been really quite fun working with this. I did 100% hemp with our friends at NDL. But even Levi's, every major denim brand has got a history with hemp. But Levi's has got one of the earliest that I know of. The Levi's Red Collection back in 1999, they used the hemp blend, which was really quite, quite remarkable. You must understand, this is at the time when it was all super duper baggy fits and you know, it was just really oversized. And they came out with this amazing collection and they did a hemp blend collection and they also did a tensile like lyocell blend too, which is quite amazing. So this hemp blend was a 40, 40, 40%, but every major mill is dabbling in hemp and they're going for it in a really big way. If you name a company, they're all doing it. So definitely in the next few years, 
once our Pakistani friends and our Chinese friends, once we come up, and we're only at the infancy as well, just like Michael was saying in his earlier presentation, it's taken 30 years for like Tencel, Lysel. Hemp, you know, we've only been starting using it again since, since the 80s. So it will take one of these mills to go to a like Toyota uh, or go to a, 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 man, a like, manufacturer in, in like, Japan and invent a new way of spinning it. So it's even, even more like refined, but they're all, they're all doing it. So make sure Obviously, for you guys at like, at like Ravensbourne, we're getting sponsored by a lot of these amazing mills. So, so, so some of them are, are like definitely giving us some hemp qualities as well. But what can we learn? It's pretty much that. It's like, you know, there's still learning to be done. We're only at the infancy of hemp denim now. It's the fact that it's been made legal in a lot of countries only in the last few years. It's, we're at the beginning of it, and it's super duper exciting. Um, but, you know, the problem is it's still quite, it's still quite expensive, you know. So you will never find a 100% hemp garment yet because it's just too expensive. So you find it at the 40%, at the 20% at the 20 mark. Many people are mixing Tencel, Lyocell and other things with it as well, which is quite sort of cool. But, you know, I've, I've seen a couple of mills mix, mix polyester with it and I'm like, oh, that's a shame. So, because it's got, hemp has got something quite amazing about it and I was, it's, it's super strong. It's one of the strongest yarns as well. You don't need to put, 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 put polyester in it. So that's quite, quite a bad thing. But, you know, what are the other benefits? We know it's anti my anti microbial and antibacterial uh, but also we know now as well this is from one of the panel talks i did like a while ago it takes toxins out of the earth it's unbelievable it's this magic plant you know so they planted it all around chernobyl and it took the toxins out of the earth so hemp is quite an amazing thing but also another thing is also one acre of hemp produces more oxygen than 25 acres of of, of like a forest so if you if you're a factory and you want to become completely neutral just plant hemp everywhere you know it's just one of these amazing amazing things and this is me. Obviously, I'll be, I'll be here for the next couple of days as well. So don't worry. You can always find me on like Instagram. But that's enough about me. Let's just see what some of the questions we got. We've got what's the current size of the hemp apparel market? Um, not that large. Uh, not not that large. I wouldn't be the expert to tell you. I've just been researching it and I've been like designing with it. I'll be probably one of our mill partners or one of the. I know all our all our all the best mills are like doing it. Everyone from Candiani to our friends in Pakistan from NDL, you name any of the artistics, you name it, they're all doing it, even a lot of our Chinese friends as well, and Cone, everyone's doing it. We're, all of us are putting all our chips in for hemp. And, and we're, well, not only that, we're mixing it with loads of other cool stuff as well. It's the most exciting thing, personally, that's probably happened in the last few years for me, is, is actually dabbling with hemp. Dear Morsin, your statistics input requirement for cotton are very inaccurate, oh, sorry, the, uh, the world fiber market between polyester and fibers, not versus hemp. Why do you compare hemp to polyester instead in cotton? Um, I was just giving, the presentation was just geared to explain the, the differences on water, like con, water, like consumption. It wasn't about polyester. I, I haven't got the facts about polyester versus hemp. So I wouldn't be the best person to do. Maybe Andrew or someone else, or even like Miguel could probably jump in and help help me there. But sorry, Terry, I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. It's best to be honest about it. Great response to that question. Okay, cool. So, um, are there any more questions about hemp before we move on to the next topic? I've got, you've got me for a few more minutes. Um, if not, then I'm going to just move on. No, no, no. I hope you, hope you enjoyed it. I love working with hemp. It's been really fun. Um, there's loads of secret NDA stuff I'm doing and I can't talk about, but watch this space. It's pretty exciting what's going on. What other characteristics compared to hemp versus cotton? Um, actually, I've been finding working with it. All the hemp products that I've been working with, it looks like a denim that's from the 1940s. It's got really amazing characteristics. It's got slubby, 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 slubby textures. It's quite epic. But anyway, we're going to move on now. Sorry, sorry, Terry, I can't answer your question. Production total for hemp is about 800, 800, 800 tons. Thank you for that. 